Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's Tableau video, we're gonna cover different join types uh, that you can perform in Tableau Desktop. Um, talk about their differences, why you may want one versus the other, and go through some use cases, all right? So I think the first thing is for a little bit of review, uh, let's just cover what is a join, okay? And so a join uh, in the world of data is when you're combining two tables of data horizontally and you are trying to join on a common key, uh, meaning there's at least one column that has some similar values, if not multiple. So conceptually, you might have one table of 20 rows of data and another table of 20 rows of data, and the output is actually still 20 rows of data, but now the table has you know twice as many columns because you just join them together. So there's a lot of different types of joins, uh, but that is a little bit of how that would work. Um, so I'm going to flip over and show you the data source that we will be working with in this video. Um, I've just captured two very simple tables of data. Uh, one of them lists the population by different states and territories in the U.S. I'll start with that one first. Um, so currently I've got it sorted by 2020 population. You can see California is up here at the top of the list. And then it has some different territories in the U.S., including places like Samoa and the Northern Mariana Islands. So there's actually 56 uh, valid records in this sheet, or I'm going to call it a table. Okay. So I flip back over to the other sheet, electoral votes by state. Um, so for those non-US folks that subscribe to the channel, thank you for finding us. Uh, we have a very weird system where people get to vote on the president, but then at the end of the day, there's some super voters, electoral college voters in each state that actually get to pick the president. It's who knows why they made this up hundreds of years ago. Um, so each state gets some electoral college votes. And uh, that's true of not only states, but also the District of Columbia, our capital, which is technically not a state, another weird deal. Uh, they get some votes. And then in this table, I've got a total showing 538. Okay, so we're going to join these together. Um, so there's in this table has got 52 valid records. So they don't, a lot of the states are going to match up, you know, uh, you know, 50 out of 50 could find a match, but there's totals, there's territories. So we're going to see what happens when we go through different types of joins. Okay, so I'm going to flip over to my Tableau workbook. And there's actually four types of joins that we can cover. Before we dive into that, um, I want to talk about join cardinality. Okay, join cardinality is basically how many possible matches could there be for each row in a table. So for example, with our data here, I would never expect a state to find more than one match in the other table. There's probably a record for California in the first sheet. There's probably a record for California in the second sheet. It's not gonna find 10 records for California, right? So in this case, our cardinality is one to one, right? One state should find a one state match, if any. Um, there's also other types of cardinality, like many to one, so in that case, let's say you had a record for every county in every state. So you might have 30 counties in a single state that would just find a single state match in another table. Okay, so that's a many to one cardinality. And then you might have something like many to many. So you might say, okay, here's a list of every voter, you know, millions of people. And then here's a list of all the possible states that they've lived in over the last 20 years. So I've lived in Washington state and I've lived in Maryland. So I would have two matches, right? Somebody else might have one, somebody else might have 10. So that's a many to many uh, cardinality style of join. So again, for our focuses here, uh, we're just dealing with one to one, keeping things a little bit simpler for our example. Okay, so I've already connected to the data, and now what we're gonna do is run through what happens when we go through these different join types, left, inner, right, and outer, the four possible join types that you can choose in Tableau Desktop, okay? And let's say at the end of the day, I wanna be able to answer a question, maybe it's something like, um, which states, uh, or maybe like, what uh, is the breakdown of population versus electoral, if I can spell, uh, college votes by state. All right. So, so far, I'm gonna pop back over to my data source tab since I've already got this connection. And right now I've just got the one table connected population by state territory, okay? And you can see here, I've got 56 rows of data. So one of my favorite tricks that I like to use when I'm trying out different joins uh, is to go to a worksheet and then grab 
um, either a number of records field or if there's some sort of generated count field like population by state territory count, it's all, per, it's all italicized. That's uh, indicating that Tableau uh, generated this field. If I put this on text, it's gonna tell me how many rows of data there are in this data set. So you might say, well, why'd you do that in the worksheet? You could see that in the data source tab. Um, so that's true, but once your data source gets large enough, like let's say it's 10,000 or 100,000 or a million records, um, this is just gonna be showing you a preview of the data rather than the whole data source, okay? So what's nice about doing that and putting a row count in a sheet is then when you pop back over here and you go to do some type of join, um, you know, you could see if the row count goes up or down and then be able to sort of make an assessment based on what happened. So I'm actually already in the uh, physical layer. Let me go ahead and back out of this. So when you, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll leave this here. So when you first connect to a data source, Tableau will have you drag a table out there. So imagine I've just already dragged population by state territory. So I wanna talk about joins, not relationships. Relationships, great feature. Um, we've got a video on joins versus relationships. I'll drop that in the, the description along with this workbook, along with this data source, uh, but it's not what we're covering today. So if you try and pull your second table out, you see the little orange noodle, not what we're doing today, okay? So in order to kick off the joins, what I'm gonna do is hit the drop down on um, my initial connection here, this gray box, and I'm gonna say open. And this will take me from what Tableau calls the logical layer to what Tableau calls the physical layer. So now I've got this connection to population by state territory. Um, I know I'm in the layer I want because I got the little colored ribbon next to it, which corresponds to the data source it came from. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag electoral votes by state. Um, I don't wanna drop it directly on that. I wanna drop it kind of off to the right side a little bit. And this is going to kick off Tableau's join dialog. Um, so first of all, we didn't have a match right away. And that is because um, there's no two fields which have the same name. There's very similar fields, but not the exact same, right? So I've got state or territory, and I'm gonna match that to just state in the second sheet, okay? Um, if you need a second join, you know, if you had a city name also, you could hit the drop down and do more of these. Um, we have a video on join calculations. If you need to edit something, like let's say it was Washington, DC, and it was Washington, District of Columbia in the other sheet, you can write formulas here if you need to. But we should be in pretty good shape here. So notice that what's happened is already our number of uh, rows of data and our output and our result set has already dropped from 56 to 51. Well, why did that happen? Well, um, because we've done an inner join, right? So what's happened here is there's only 51 records that found a match. So that would be the you know, 50 US states, and then I believe both of these have a District of Columbia record as well, if I could find that. Okay, so as we try out different join types, we should get different amounts of rows of data. So for instance, the uh, population by state territory, you know, that has territories like Samoa and Puerto Rico. So if I did a left join, it's going to jump back up to 56. But what does that look like in the result set? So let me collapse this little summary window here and let's find a state or territory that didn't find a match. Okay, so Puerto Rico is our first example of that, which shout out to Puerto Rico. Um, this is something I learned to make in this video. If Puerto Rico's lined up and ranked against all the other US states by population, they would get 30th, which is like, that's a pretty big territory, right? So Puerto Rico, shout out, slash, should you have some votes? Maybe, you know, seems like that would be possible. Uh, don't mean for this to go too far down that road though. So, okay, Puerto Rico, we've got our population. So what's going on here? Well, Puerto Rico is a territory, so they don't get electoral college votes uh, when it comes to deciding um, the president of the US. And that's true of other territories too, right? So they're more so down here at the bottom, but you can see places like Guam and Samoa. Also, they're showing up here, but not there. Okay, so so with the left join, we're back to 56 rows. Well, what, is a, what would a right join do? If I'm correct, I'm thinking a right join will give us the 52 rows. So we got the 50 US states, District of Columbia, and then there was a total in the electoral college data source that would not find a match in the state or territory population data source, okay? And then a full outer join should give us every row of data. So now we're up to 57. 
So now there'll be some unmatched records from both data sources, right? So you might have Puerto Rico with no match over here, and then you should have the total with no match over there. And that's okay with the way this data is designed. There's going to be some records in both tables that never find a match. All right. Um, okay, so to go and be able to answer our question now in sheet one, what is the breakdown of population versus electoral college votes by state? This should be interesting. So what we can do is we're just going to write a calculation. And I'm just going to take the population um, divided by the number of electoral college votes. And so I'll just call this like population per electoral college vote, right? So which states have a ton of people per vote, which states have fewer. So I should be able to, ooh, I might need to combine these state fields. No, I'll just use state from electoral colleges because if there's no votes, then we don't care what your population is. You got nothing, right? So let me remove the count field and let me instead grab my population per electoral college vote and I'm gonna throw that on columns and then we'll do a little descending sort here and things should get interesting, right? So I found this very fascinating. So like Texas is at the top of the list, over 700,000 people in Texas for every one electoral college vote they get. And then you go down near the bottom of the list and you got places like Wyoming and Vermont that are around a couple hundred thousand people per electoral college vote. So definitely it seems like the smaller states get a bit of an outsized say or an outsized representation you know, per electoral college vote as compared to the big states, the Texas and Florida, California, New York's of the world that seem to be getting a little bit more of the uh, the uh, short end of the stick, a little more of the raw deal here. So anyways, um, yeah, that's a little bit of a breakdown of join types. Um, so I hope that was helpful to go through this example and see us run through the four join types. Um, we appreciate you uh, joining, pun intended, us. And we look forward to bringing you another video here next week on the One Number YouTube channel. So thank you so much.